Welcome back to The Big Picture. I'm Gerard McClendon, and we're talking about lost spirits in the material world. Has mankind lost its way? Have we lost our creativity? Have we lost our, our civility in society? Today I'm joined with Teddy McClendon from McClendonReport.com. We're advancing the discussion right now. We, we were in civility and politeness in the first segment, mm -hmm. but now we want to talk about man's reason and also why man isn't getting to a higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. But first of all, let's, let's start with reason. It seems that, that many times people can't even come up with a, an answer that makes any sense. People, people know to go right, but they can continue to go left. Right. You know, now in the first segment we talked about how some of this can come from a background that has no discipline to it. Mm -hmm. But but why do you think in a society like this, you know, free thinking society, so many people are operating outside of reason? Well, the operative word is the word free. It's free will. Okay? Mm -hmm. And when uh, that's the one thing that human beings have, okay, that separates them from the other uh, inhabitants of earth is mm -hmm. free will. Mm -hmm. And, and man pretty much um, almost routinely misuses the privilege of free will. Yeah, yeah, I, I notice it, and let's, let's try to think of some examples for our audience. I, I notice it in time management a lot. Uh, people abuse free will. I also notice it in terms of making a decision that's going to benefit someone outside of my own selfish reason. Yes. You know, whereas if, if, if I'm a leader, I have to make decisions not just for myself, but for a group of five or a group of ten or a group of a thousand. Correct. And, and it seems as if sometimes reason just escapes us. It does. You know, and I'm, I'm trying to get to, to, to where, you know, you know, what is the lost spirit in us not clinging to reason if we have been blessed with a higher consciousness or a larger brain in terms of capacity or some sort of connection to a higher form? You know something, those are very good questions, okay? It might have a little bit to do with seeing bad people succeed. <laughs> it might have something to do with seeing corrupt people endure. Yes. Okay? With, with antisocial people advance. Yes. You see that. You see absolute scoundrels out there advancing. That's true. And so naturally that, that, that feeds into your own temptation mm -hmm. to do dysfunctional things. Right. And so that's why a lot of people go against their own better judgment, better reason, better logic in, in, into a very gray area and not so gray area of, uh, of, of antisocial behavior. Good. And I think this brings us right back to the to the title of today's show, Lost Spirits in This Material World. Mm -hmm. It's like people have, are clinging so much to material and they're trying to get away from the actual spirit. Right. We see this in the scandals that you talked about last year with Enron. Yes. You know, we see it happening with United going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing that everyone's trying to be a high roller, mm -hmm. you know, but then once the cover is pulled, we see that these people have been cheating. Right stealing, mm -hmm. manipulating, uh, embezzling, you know, and then we find out later that these people were scoundrels in the first place. But as role models before they get caught, people can cling to that because it's like, wow, I, I kind of want to be like that. That right. sounds like a fast way to move up. Right. He or she is a success. And that's the thing that, uh, that uh, persuades a lot of people to, to believe in that kind of a lifestyle. Yeah. And it's... Uh, it's unfortunate. It's a it's a difficult task to to walk with some degree of um, of integrity mm -hmm. and, and, and honesty, and that's uh, that's where the, the the spirit is is sort of becoming subjugated to uh, the the lesser natures of individuals. So you know what? It's it's more difficult to lead to higher consciousness than if you lack civility and reason. How yes. can you get to higher consciousness? And, and, and this is something that you talk about all the time. How can you get to a Maslowian self-actualized level if you can't even say hello to someone? Exactly. You know, or you can't open a door for someone, mm -hmm. or you think that the world is after you. Right. You know, how can you get to a higher consciousness? You know, and, and, and I, I want to advance this by saying, is it adults' responsibility to make sure that children, who we talked about in the first segment, children understand what high consciousness is. Not in that 
particular terminology, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but for them to understand that, hey, you do have a purpose. Yes. The four, the five, the six-year-old. You're, you're special. You're different. Is that our responsibility it, to tell them that? It absolutely is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. And, and you, want to, you want to propel the children higher and further than, than you've even gone in your own lifetime. Mm -hmm. that, that would seem to be our purpose. Mm -hmm. propel the next generation and, and posterity, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, something that you always talk about, and I, I want you to elaborate on this, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the rock star slash easy listening music composer Sting, Gordon Sumner from the world famous group The Police, uh -huh. came out with a song called Spirits in the Material World. Yes. You know, and uh, you know what's interesting. It was on the Ghost in the Machine album. Yes. And what's mm -hmm. interesting about that is we are spirits in the material world. Yes. And it says there is no political solution. Now, what does that mean? It's to, to our troubled evolution. Evolution. Yes. Have no faith in constitution. There is no bloody revolution. Okay. Now, what does the first line mean? There is no political solution because, see, I know that you call yourself apolitical a lot, but but what does that mean? There's no political solution. There, come on, there has to be. That song is saying an awful lot. Um, Sting, me, Gordon Sumner, mm -hmm. of of Birmingham, England, I believe, uh, Newcastle, England. He has the rare knack of having a great gift for music. And he's also a thoughtful and well-read individual, okay? Mm -hmm. So he is a rarity in the music business, just to say that at, the, at the outset. But what Spirits in the Material World was, was discussing was he flashed onto the idea that we're not just beings walking around. You know, there is a, a, another component to human beings that goes beyond our physical body. Right. You see, uh, th that that persuades us to do certain things. It's, it's, it's behind all the volition, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so with the first line, there's no political solution. In other words, a, a, a president, a mayor, a senator, a governor, a councilman can't really dictate human nature. Mm -hmm. You see? Right. There's no political solution for aberrant behavior. Right. And, and I think that opening line to that very powerful song is stating that in no uncertain terms. Yes, and, and this is once again why home training, something you mentioned earlier, has to be the definitive art form and science of a parent's ability to raise a child. Yes. Home training. Because uh, you know, even in this advanced technological age we're in now, we're on the verge of war. Indeed. We're on the verge of you know, there's, there's still slavery in the world. Yes, You know, there is. women being sold for prostitution. Yes. You know, there's still child labor. Yes. You know, uh, uh, you know people in, in, in Asian uh, countries and cities making rugs for very little cents per day. Right. You know, this stuff is going on, yes. and, and the United States supports a lot of this, this aberrant uh, uh, behavior. You right. Know. Or those in power in general. Right. You know, so that's sort of, uh, once again, that's another human nature, an unfortunate trait of, of human nature that we have to elevate beyond somehow. When we see a person, it, when we see a person's body, so you're saying that we're not really seeing that person. Well, what do you mean by that? Uh, that person has something within mm -hmm. that is governing his or her existence, and it is the captain of that person's volition, if you will. You know, it's, it's the rudder in the ship that is the human being. Okay, yeah. it's navigating that life of that human being, you know, and it's invisible except for those who are, you know, very sensitive, like they say, women's intuition or, or just human beings' intuition. We do have the ability to detect these things, but it's not as, as palpable as just looking at a person's smile or looking at a person's clothing. This is interesting because uh, I'm doing some studies at uh, Loyola University and Will met. Illinois and uh, some of my colleagues uh, um, uh, are studying bullying mm -hmm. and why people bully, mm -hmm. why people are bullied. Yes. You know, a friend of mine, Chris, along with Tiffany, Danita, and Dave, you know, we're all working on, you know, what's the cause for this? And, and, and what's interesting is we found uh, in our research that it's not just the bully being reinforced to bully, 
okay, or yes. to manipulate and push people around. Mm -hmm. It's the people that allow it to yes. occur. And many times the people that allow it to occur have more power. Right. Teachers, right. parents, right. And, and even other students who are bystanders. They're enablers. Enablers. Mm -hmm. and, and I want you to explain that term. We're going to be closing shortly, but explain the term enabler in, in forms of someone being bullied around. Well, um, in the words of Martin Luther King, a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Right. Okay. And so when you, and that's a paraphrase, mm -hmm. but when you stand idly by while um, inequity is going on, even on the playground, okay, in the game room, in the lunch room, mm -hmm. then you are enabling that type of behavior to, to persist. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And see, this definitely, definitely leads to the lost spirit. Indeed. Because now you're in a situation where you're dealing with something so mundane and so trite and small that your purpose in life has been reduced to an incident. Mm -hmm. as opposed to an idea, a concept, something that's bigger, that's going to benefit the whole group. Right. And, and this is what I'm trying to get, you know, uh, uh, children and teachers and parents to understand that the child is a special human being that's been brought into this world for a specific reason, a specific purpose. No doubt. And the, the brightness of children and the, the quickness of the, the, the synapses that occur in their brains is just a miraculous thing. The, the human mind at the young formative stage is, is a marvel of the universe and I don't think we're fully exploiting and, and nurturing that type of genius that all children have. Let's talk about purpose. How do we get to find what our purpose in life is? You know, how, you, know you wake up in the morning and you're, you're kind of working your nine to five job. Uh, you, you, you watch the game on Sunday, you, you have a beverage, you know, wh where does the purpose in life come into play? Well, see, like you often mention and cite the movie The Matrix, how we live inside of a box of, of our own false reality or a reality that's been taught to us early on. And as such, it's difficult to find one's purpose because your purpose is sort of been uh, predicted to you, you know, uh, in, the, in the words of the rock group Rush, um, opinions are provided, the future predecided, you see, yes. detached and subdivided in a mass production zone. In other words, you, have, those things are already laid on your plate yeah. for you to, to ponder or for you to fall in lockstep with others' behavior. So how can you find a life purpose when you have that kind of tainting yeah. of your own free will and volition. You're talking about Rush, you're bringing in Sting today, the police, I'm loving this, you know, because we do have to find out, you know, what our purpose is in life, and so do all of our viewers, right. you know, and, and I think it's, it's the thing that frustrates me, but at the same time, mankind has, has performed miracles, yes. and, and we have to get to the stage where everyone, you know, can realize that. I, Final comment. Okay, I think the point is to never give up on the journey, you know, even at, at my age, I guess you would call me middle age now, I'm still still in that journey, you know, on that quest. Mm -hmm. Never lose that quest and that, that, that love of, of adventure and finding out what this thing is about. We want to thank you all for joining us on The Big Picture tonight. We're talking about lost spirits in the material world. Trust yourself, trust your instincts, and find your purpose. Have a good evening.